In this video, I wanted to share the top three regrets I have working as a data scientist in the US for the last 10 plus years. Overall, I think I had a wonderful career as a data scientist. I got a chance to work on some amazing opportunities, working with very brilliant, very bright people. I had a chance to work for the top tech companies, which I think is a dream for most data scientists. I had an opportunity to get the best salaries with great perks. So this video is not about complain. It is more about hindsight and reflection and thinking that what are the lessons which I've learned throughout this journey. I should have learned this lesson earlier and maybe had made a little more intelligent choices. And the reason I'm sharing all this with you is that if you are a newcomer in the data science field, then maybe you'll be able to benefit with some of this advice and make better decisions when you come to the crossroads. So the very first regret is that when I started my career as a data scientist, I was trying to learn as much as I can. So that was a good thing. But I think my strategy on how I should be learning was a little bit flawed. When I was trying to learn things, I was trying to go deep into everything. And then that led to sort of a never ending rabbit hole. For example, if I'm trying to learn linear regression, then that has roots into learning mathematics and then linear algebra and then calculus. And trying to follow that path, I think I went too deep into a lot of these concepts. And I spent a lot of time trying to go through that dry mathematical books when that led to a lot of time which was not fully wasted but could have been better spent somewhere else so my advice to someone who is starting the career in data science would be that first understand that data science is a very vast and very deep field you can pick any discipline within data science, for example, Python, and you can easily spend at least one to two years mastering it. And then there is SQL, and then there is statistics, and then there's machine learning and deep learning and all of those things. So be very strategic in terms of what you're trying to learn and how much time you are allocating on each of these disciplines. If you pick any of these disciplines and go deep into it, you can spend one to two years trying to master it, whereas your understanding of the other components would be very shallow. And that will not help you move forward in landing a better a job or improving your day-to-day -day skills as a data scientist. So be very strategic. Begin with the end in mind. If your goal is to land a job in a certain company, then figure out what kind of questions are asked in that interview and just try to prepare around it. If your goal is to excel at your current job, then figure out what are the day-to-day -day practical actual skills needed to excel at your current job and then revolve your learning around it. This is the area where I've seen most of the newcomers in data science sort of get tripped because they don't know how to strategically learn data science. To help answer that question to some extent, I've created a free guide on the roadmap on how you can learn different components so that you can increase your odds of um, landing a data science job. But if you have any other goal, then just be strategic and mindful about what is needed to accomplish your goal and then orient your preparation according to that goal. Because otherwise, if you just aimlessly try to become good at data science, then chances are that you will make the same mistake which I did, which is that you try to learn something and then that is dependent on something else. So you go deep and then that is dependent on something else. So you keep going down and down the rabbit hole, spending a lot of time learning those things which are not fully, fully relevant to the day-to-day -day tasks which are you are needed to accomplish as a data scientist or the interview questions which you need to answer if you want to land your dream job. And if my roadmap can help you, then feel free to check out the link in the description. And as I said, if you have some other goal, then just be very mindful and thoughtful about it, and then just revolve your learning around that goal. The second regret I have is that I did not target FANG or the top tech companies in my early data science career. And the reason was that I thought that I was just not ready. And maybe some years after, I will have enough confidence and enough knowledge that I can crack those FANG interviews. Knowing from hindsight, I think that knowledge was flawed because if you look at the selection process for most of these FANG companies, their interviews are very standardized and they are very different from the kind of skill set you acquire on your day-to-day data science job. So even if you have 10 years of working experience as a data scientist, if you just go to attend these FANG interviews, your chances of getting selected are very slim because these top FANG companies, their interviews look like, for example, lead code interview rounds or SQL interview rounds or ML system design interview rounds. Now, of course, some practical knowledge really helps there, but I don't think if you have just been a good data scientist working in industry for 10 years, you could go and crack that 
lead code interview question. So I think that I should have very initially made up my mind that if I want to go to the fan company, which I wanted to, then understand what the interview process there looks like and then start preparing for it. Because just by virtue of time, working as a data scientist in the industry does not give you the competence which is required to crack those interviews. But the good thing is that once you have figured out what kind of interview questions they ask and then you start preparing around it, then it doesn't take you more than six to eight months to be fully prepared and at least start applying for these roles, which I think I should have done pretty earlier in my career, which I did not. The third regret which I had was staying too long with some companies. Of course, when you are a newcomer and then you work for some companies, you develop some relationships there and companies are giving you good money and good perks. So at a very deep level, you develop this concept of sort of loyalty to the company and to the people you're working for. And this idea of that someday you'll say, okay, I'm going away to some other company looks very difficult. Though I didn't think about it very explicitly, but when I reflect back, I think that was sort of a contributing factor for me not switching jobs as early as I should have. But what I have learned, especially in the last two, three years, is that companies are very brutal when it comes to safeguarding their own interest. They can very easily lay off you and tens of thousands of other people at a single day notice if they think that safeguarding your job will hurt their interests. So when it comes to companies, there is no concept of loyalty. There is no concept of safeguarding others' interests. They are very strategic, very clear about safeguarding their own interests. I think we as an employee should have the same mindset. We should be protecting our own interests first, which means keep an eye on increasing your own skill set and keep switching jobs every two to three years because that is the best way for you to maximize your experience, your exposure to develop maximum amount of connections and also keep increasing your salary as you keep switching jobs from one employer to another. So my advice looking back to my younger self would be don't fall into this trap of company loyalty. There's no such thing as company loyalty. You should be safeguarding your own and your family's interests. Don't go into the comfort zone that I've been working in this company for I know these people. Just as soon as you're about to reach the second year anniversary of your job, it's time for you to ramp up on your skill set and start interviewing elsewhere. Two to three years, I think, is a very sweet spot in staying at a company understand their processes, their business problems, and learn as much as you can from that company. And then moving on to the next company so that you could see an increase in your salary and you can work on some different kind of projects which increases your exposure and your learning. If you are a newcomer to this field, I hope you found value in some of the advice I've shared here. As I said, if you're struggling with what kind of roadmap you should be following when preparing for data science interviews, the guide for that is in the description. And some of the mistakes which I made during my career were because of some wrong advice which I followed. And I think a lot of people are following such wrong advice. I've created a different video on the topic of what are some bad popular advice out there, which leads to a lot of people wasting a lot of their time. The link for that video is somewhere here. Please check it out. I'm pretty sure you like it. Thank you so much for watching.